Welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. And today we're talking all about how to parent your Pisces child, how to parent and reparent the Pisces child. So if you're a parent who has a Pisces child or you are a Pisces adult that is working on healing from childhood triggers and reparenting yourself, this video is for you. So before we begin, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. You can get on my mailing list by clicking on the link below for your regular uh, transits, planetary forecasts, extra information, all that good stuff. And you can also access my audiobooks, including a free audiobook sample um, by clicking the link in the video description. So let's get down to it. So Pisces is a feminine energy, mutable water sign. Makes it very interesting. So being a water sign, it is a feminine energy sign. It is more passive. It is more intuitive. It is a more self-contained energy as opposed to outwardly expressive. When you talk about fire signs, basically like you, you cannot, it's almost impossible to contain fire, right? Fire people are outwardly expressive. They project their energy outward. Water signs tend to project their energy inward. They keep it in, okay? So it's very self-contained. That makes it a little bit challenging for parents of Pisces kids to kind of figure out what the kids are thinking, feeling, going through, uh, what they're all about, okay? It's not impossible, but it's a little more challenging. So the mutable modality, of course, means that it can waffle between fixed and cardinal. So you may see the more, you know, fixed expression of the sign, dwelling on things. And at other times you may see the more cardinal expression of a sign, this kind of forward movement, forward progression, intent on advancement. So there is a great duality about the sign. The symbol for the sign are the kind of the, the dual fish swimming against each other. And that's very emblematic of Pisces energy. Pisces people uh, tend to have kind of one foot on the material, superficial, earthly plane, and then the other foot in kind of the nebulous, um, spiritual plane. If Pisces is associated with the 12th house. The 12th house is kind of an open gate. People with heavy 12th house placements have a lot of intuitive, naturally intuitive psychic energy about them. So the main thing to know right out of the gate is that Pisces makes decisions a lot of the time based on emotions, feelings, intuition. They're able to intuit things as opposed to using logic and rationality to make decisions like air signs would. Pisces is a sign that is about collective healing. Of all the signs, it is the one most closely connected to kind of the collective unconscious, uh, what Carl Jung talks about, right? Kind of where all, all our souls are connected um, on, on, under this kind of auspice of universal consciousness. And these physical bodies we have are all just kind of outward expressions of the same consciousness. So Pisces is a sign that is most closely attuned to that. It is also a very healing sign. It has a great capacity for love, universal love, and universal healing. Now this can also work against the Pisces person in that they direct their energy toward this kind of universal love, universal healing. They want to love everybody. They want to heal everybody. They um, very closely associate with the feelings of other people. They, they're very empathic but that can also lead to burnout. Pisces is often overwhelmed by this, just the kind of the great feelings that they have themselves and overwhelmed by the feelings of other people. Because as we'll talk about in a bit, water kind of blurs the boundaries. So between you and the other person in a relationship, for example, or a friendship, and it's difficult to know kind of where you end and the other person begins. So a lot of what I tell parents of Pisces kids to, to teach, to teach, the Pisces children is kind of how to observe instead of absorbing other people's emotions, because that just leads the child to be completely overwhelmed and eventually shut down. Pisces is also deeply sensitive. Their feelings are easily hurt. There's almost always a risk of codependence because of all the things we've just talked about with that kind of associating with the feelings of others and identifying with the feelings of others. Now, Pisces being associated with the 12th house, anyone who has strong Pisces energy in their chart feels kind of cribbed or confined by this material plane of existence. And these people are always searching for meaning outside of the material, outside of the superficial. 
They're always searching for some like greater fulfillment or greater meaning of life. And this can manifest in several ways. It can manifest as a love for art. It can manifest as this being drawn to spirituality. It can um, manifest in just wanting to have these experiences that are kind of out of the ordinary, being in nature, for example. A lot of uh, Pisces adults, if, if they're not encouraged to pursue these things and these means of fulfillment in healthy ways, there's a risk for, you know, drug and alcohol use because having these kind of, uh, they want to have these kind of supernatural experiences as a means to fulfillment. So that's, that's always a risk. I'm always hesitant to kind of put that on a parent's radar, but the main message I want to send regarding this issue is that with your Pisces child, you're going to have to find ways and encourage them to find ways to seek fulfillment that is out that are outside of kind of the ordinary, the mundane, the, the superficial and things like that. So instead of encouraging them to seek kind of external validation, to seek um, kind of inputs from other people, you're going to want to encourage them to do a lot of self-reflecting and give them a lot of time, ample opportunities to be alone and to reflect on things. And we're going to talk in a second about why that's important. And this need, this kind of need for this deep soul fulfillment, it's really difficult for a child to articulate this. It's difficult for adults who have this need to articulate this. So this is why you as the parent of a Pisces child have to be aware of this because the child is not going to know how to articulate this need to you. And also what happens a lot of the time is the Pisces child, especially the older child, will see people having fun, like going out, uh, doing things, having play dates. And when they're older, when they're adults, they're going to see people, you know, hanging out at restaurants and bars and, and social events. And they're going to see these adults having fun. And they're going to wonder, why do I not get the same sense of fulfillment as these people appear to get? Now, number one, just because these people are uh, appear to be having a good time, appear to be fulfilled, does not mean they are being fulfilled, obviously. And number two, not everybody seeks fulfillment in the same way. So my point here is that Pisces children feel uh, kind of, they tend to feel disassociated from other people because of this, because of this deep need for some kind of fulfillment outside of themselves and outside of this material plane of existence. They're always looking for this kind of supernatural, almost kind of otherworldly type of fulfillment, which you don't get by, by mundane things a lot of the time. So you as the parent have to be conscious of this. Another thing I hear a lot about from water sign children and parents of water sign children is that the kids are, the water sign children, uh, including Pisces, are interested in deep subjects and they'll try to engage other people, including their peers, in deep subjects. And the peers are not always interested in that for a variety of reasons. They're not, they're not, they don't have the same energy or sometimes it's because they're afraid of these subjects because they're subjects that you kind of take on faith, right? You don't know or you can't prove. So you need to practice telling your child, hey, it's okay if you don't get along with so-and-so or if so-and-so does not respond to you, maybe you, know, you don't connect with them on that level, that's okay. Eventually, you will find people that you connect with on that level. Maybe not your peers, maybe not even anyone in your friend group right now, but eventually you will find people who appreciate what you appreciate and who you will connect with. So keep looking for those people. You make, you want to make sure you are not suggesting your Pisces child is somehow defective or deficient or weird or strange because they are different from other people or because they value things that the majority of their peers do not seem to value. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It is very important. It is essential that you give your Pisces child alone time and time to reflect. And one of the big criticisms I have of current society in general, uh, especially where we live, is that parents tend to fill the children's day with, with all kinds of activities. And they schedule, like every minute of the day is scheduled with something. I don't want my kid to be bored or I don't want my kid to have time to get into trouble. So I'm gonna over schedule and do all these things. Okay. Well, Pisces kids, all kids, really Pisces kids, water sign kids, most of all need periods of downtime. One, because they tend to be more introverted and introverts need alone time to recharge their energy. 
but two, because they need alone time to just reflect and think about things. That may seem weird to people with a lot of fire energy who are always doing stuff that I need, I need external inputs all the time. I need, you know, stimulation all the time. Pisces is not like that, does not tend to be like that. They don't need to be stimulated all the time. In fact, that is overwhelming and overstimulating for them. They need these periods to be bored, these periods of alone time where they are not forced to concentrate on other people's wants and other people's goals. They are just being, they are just existing. So when you are forced to concentrate on other people's ideas, other people's values, other people's goals, you know, you're not in flow state. It's this sense of um, engagement with everything around you. Okay. And that you are given the freedom to just be and reflect on things and let anything kind of observe anything that comes into your mind. Okay. We call this kind of in the spiritual community, you're kind of recept in a receptive state to receive spiritual downloads. That may sound really weird, but it's true. Like if you've ever found yourself in a meditative state and you don't have to be meditating for this to occur. But if you're in a state where you're receptive, you're not focusing on anything. You're not stressing. You're not having anxious thoughts. You're either meditating or you're maybe you're taking a solo walk in nature or you're working out by yourself. Um, then you'll, you'll sometimes things will spontaneously pop into your head and it's because you are receptive in that moment. You'll think, Oh, that makes sense. Or, I'm intuiting that I should be doing this, or I didn't think of that before you're, and you're receiving this information, these downloads, as we call them, because you're open and receptive to them in that moment. And that is what Pisces people crave to a large degree. They want to be, they crave the ability to be reflective and receptive to this information. Okay. Whether, you know, you think it's coming from some, from spirit or universal consciousness or your own intuition, but they want to be receptive to this. So it is essential that they have periods of alone time where they're not like doing any activity or they're not you doing any useful activity, meaning there's no pressure to do anything so that they can kind of reflect and think about things to somebody who maybe has a lot of fire energy in their chart or even air energy, uh, that may seem odd, but it is essential for water sign children. Now we're going to talk about a few areas to focus on as parents of Pisces children or Pisces adults who are reparenting ourselves. One is that, as I kind of hinted earlier, boundaries are very important for Pisces kids. It's important that you are teaching them, showing them, emulating healthy boundaries. So the parent has got to show healthy boundaries. So how do you do this? You respect the boundaries of your child, right? And you as a parent are cultivating healthy boundaries yourself. So what does it look like? So when you're expressing a healthy boundary, it's not, for example, saying, I don't want you to ever do this, or you better not do this, or you are not allowed to do this. Cause that's kind of controlling somebody else's behavior. It's more about if you do this, X will happen. Or if you do this, I will do this. Maybe with like, you know, a younger child and they're touching you in the face and you tell them, please, I don't want to be touched on the face right now. Or I don't want, you know, my nose to be scratched or whatever. And you tell them, if you keep touching me on the face, I'm going to have to put you down. I'm not going to hold you anymore. Boom. That's your healthy boundary. Okay. Or if you're in an adult relationship, um, if you do this, I'm going to have to do this. Or if you continue to yell at me, I'm going to have to leave the room. That's the, that's an example of a healthy boundary. Okay. It's not, you better not do this. Or I forbid you to do this. If look, this is very uncomfortable for me to be yelled at. If you continue to yell at me like this, I'm going to leave the room. Boom. So having a Pisces child, a water sign child in general, uh, a lot of that is about teaching them healthy boundaries, how to have healthy boundaries with other people. Okay. And allowing the kids to express the boundaries, because as we said earlier, you know, Pisces kids just have this deep healing, this deep motivation to heal others. And that can lead to burnout and that can lead to codependence and that can lead to enabling as adults and all these things. And they have to know when to say, you know, I need a break from this. I cannot do this anymore, or I cannot give emotional support to this person anymore, or I cannot enable this person anymore. Or today I just don't have the energy to deal with this or to deal with other people. So a lot of parenting a Pisces kid is teaching them about the healthy boundaries and how to protect their energy. 
Pisces also tends to be sacrificial with their time and with their energy. So protecting the boundaries is so important. Pisces kids need to be very careful about who has access to them, who has access to their energy and who they give their energy to. Because my experience is, you know, people don't spontaneously realize that you are burned out. And it's not necessarily that they are, you know, um, there's anything nefarious in what they're doing or malicious. They may not realize you're burned out. It's up to you to protect your energy. And it's up to you, the parent, to uh, teach the child how to protect their energy. Because if you keep giving and giving and giving to people, they're just going to take and take and take and they won't realize that you are burning out and shutting down. It's up to you to protect your space and your energy. And on that note, teaching healthy empathy to a Pisces child is also absolutely essential and teaching limits on that empathy and how to protect their energy and prevent burnout and all these things we're talking about. So you want to reinforce healthy empathy with your Pisces child and also make clear when you need a break and take breaks. And that's teaching the child that they also have the right to take breaks when they're tired and burned out. Remember to always, as we always say on this channel, validate emotions. You know, it's okay to feel that way. Pisces have such deep, sensitive, emotional experiences and they want to feel emotionally safe with the parents. All kids do. And it's important that the parent validates their emotions. It doesn't say things like, oh, you're too sensitive. Why are you too sensitive? Or you shouldn't be crying. Well, you need to be validating emotions. You need to be saying it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to do this. It's reasonable. It's fine for you to feel that way. You have the right to your feelings, right? So you want to recognize that so that they feel more comfortable with their feelings and that there's nothing wrong with them. Also, you want to be sure you're teaching unconditional love, right? You love the child no matter what. They don't have to do anything to earn your love. Um, I'm reading this book by, actually it's Gabor Mate's latest book called The Myth of Normal. And when he's talking about parenting, he says a really beautiful thing, which is that the, the child needs to feel like invited to exist. Like you are inviting their presence and accepting them exactly how they are and nothing they do or say changes the fact that you accept them as they are. And that's kind of what we're talking about here is that Pisces is such a loving energy. You want to be sure that you're teaching your Pisces child that you love them no matter what. They're worthy no matter what. There is nothing they could do or say that would make you love them any less and that they are worthy of love, that they don't have to do anything to receive love. They don't have to be useful to receive love. They don't have to, um, you know, uh, show up a certain way to receive love. That's, that's what we're talking about here. And you want to make sure the child knows that, that you love them no matter what. Um, Pisces, Pisces kids are very emotional. We know this. Uh, sometimes these heightened expressions of emotions by our children are very triggering to us as parents, especially if we were not allowed to show a lot of emotions as kids. For example, I was not allowed to be sad or upset. I was also not allowed to be too happy or be in too much of a good mood. So if you were raised like that, chances are that when your child gets very emotional, especially younger kids, because they just don't know how to express what they're feeling in words yet, that that's very triggering for you. And that may even provoke an emotional reaction, overreaction in you, the parent. That's normal. Give yourself grace about that and work on your emotional triggers. You know, your child is not intentionally trying to peeve you off or make you upset, okay? That's just developmentally where they are right now. And you gotta remain calm. I always say this, you gotta remain calm in the face of your child's emotional overreaction, whether they're younger or whether they're older. If you have an adolescent or a teen, you know what I'm talking about. It is very hard for the parent not to take that kid's attitude personally. It is very hard not to take personally, but it's really not about you. That's developmentally where they are. And it's your job to remain calm, emulate the behavior you want them to have, and make sure they know that you love them no matter what, despite how they may be treating you in that moment, which is hard to do, but necessary. And it pays off in the long run, it will pay off, I promise. It's just in the moment, you may be thinking, oh my God, parenting is a thankless task. Trust me, I have thought that several countless times, but it is not your kid's job, you know, to make you feel appreciated. It's great when they make you feel appreciated and they say thank you, but it is not their job to validate you. It is not their job to make sure you feel worthy and appreciated, okay? It's your job to know, you know, to heal, work on your triggers and know you are worthy 
and know you are doing good things. So if you feel that you are about to fly off the handle, you know, give, give yourself a break, <laughs> give yourself a timeout, say, hey, I need a break, or I'm about to be emotional, I think let's both calm down and take a break. Depending on the age of the child, you can do several things. You can tell them, you know, let's both take a break and when we're calm, we'll talk about this or we'll, you know, address this, or I just need a break right now, I am really exhausted and go to a different room, okay? That's okay. It is okay to remove yourself from the presence of the child. It is okay to take a break. And remember when you lose your stuff with your kid, like yelling and, you know, other things, they likely, especially kids with, with strong Pisces energy, they likely are going to feel attacked. And kids who feel that way go into kind of fight or flight. The learning centers of the brain shut down. They cannot process information. They cannot retain information. Think about a time maybe when you were in school, maybe even in college, and you were st completely stressed and anxiety ridden about something. Were you able to like learn that day? Were you able to do well on a test that day or an exam that day? Were you able to take notes that day? So that's, that's what's happening with your kid when they feel triggered like that. So if you're yelling all the time and putting them in fight or flight, all, not intentionally, but they're in fight or flight a lot, that's what's happening. And if your goal is to teach them and guide them and help them learn and process and retain information, that overreacting does not help. And the last big thing I want to talk about is we kind of hinted at this before, make sure you're giving your Pisces child plenty of time to rest, be by themselves, reflect all these things. It's good to bookend periods of activity and social events with periods of alone time where there's no pressure to do anything and uh, things like that. There's no rushing around to get somewhere, just time to be by themselves. And it's interesting when you leave a child like Pisces, alone for a while, you know, you'll find them either, they're, they're occupying their time some way, even if it's just daydreaming, they're occupying their time. And that time, the, the time to daydream is essential for creativity. That's one of the other things you learn if you study positive psychology. Now, that alone time, the time where you're bored, quote unquote, can give rise to these creative thoughts, these downloads, as we were talking about before. So this is essential. That's when, that's why, you know, Parenting experts will tell you free play is essential for, for kids' brain development, right? Um, so avoid overscheduling every minute. Uh, so it is important that your Pisces child get, gets plenty of time to both reflect, but also to rest and recharge their energies because it tends to be an introverted energy. Not every Pisces person tests as an introvert, but it is largely internally directed, internally focused energy. So those are the big areas I wanted to address today. Uh, I'm gonna have another video uh, dealing with Pisces kids next week. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions or comments or any other videos you wanna see in the near future, I'm taking requests. So make sure you write them and down in the, uh, in the comments below and let me know if you have any other um, questions or things you wanna hear about. All right, thank you very much.